every field uh, start with 100 million customers at a time with each initiative. And the only path to scale is uh, unleashing market forces. So if you want to reach 300 million or 500 million with safe drinking water, sell it at a profit. Find a way to sell it at a profit and then everybody jumps in and it reaches scale. This is what happened in the Industrial Revolution. Why can't it uh, be what is done for water? It's been a journey. It's been a very interesting journey, um, especially being a family business that has come from a very informal sector to small, small enterprise. And uh, it's been a very interesting journey, especially because we've been impacting lives. Water is fundamental to, uh, to have a chance to, to progress uh, and to fight uh, poverty. It's not sufficient. But it's solution, but it's absolutely necessary. Uh, it is near, so you can fetch water, go and continue with other, uh, with other works. You can see this area, we are, it is very hard, so life is very hard. So it is not just a matter of water. If after fetching water, you can do other things. So we fetch water for about 10 minutes. After that, the rest of the day, you can do other works. <laughs> Realizing a portfolio that provides an investor with access and exposure to what I believe to be one of the um, one of the greatest um, investment opportunities, paralleling the challenge that we all uh, confront uh, in in the sense of access to water, clean water. La salud y con el agua filtrada tenemos salud. Estamos muy agradecidos porque hemos, hemos tenido, pues ya tenemos el filtro para tomar el agua de salud, el agua filtrada, porque sabemos que es fuente de salud el agua filtrada. You should always also estimate and appreciate the dignity of poor people and give them something that has status and self-confidence and respect. So putting a high value into a product or a service is absolutely important. How you have them pay is another thing. And that should be easy and, uh, and, and reaching a lot of people. When you purchase something, when you're living on less than four dollars a day, when you make a choice and you purchase something to improve your life, um, you have more of a tendency to invest your time in, more of a, t a tendency to take care of it. You want to become rich? Drink safe water. When we started, it was good. It was a good business. Uh, and now I cannot say it's not all that bad because it's, it's, it's sustaining us. The thing with water is always high priority, but then people are not willing to pay what it costs to maintain because they've never had to. I think it's again this thing of subsidy. Is water has always been either subsidized by God, it comes down from the sky <laughs> for free. I feel that if you are being subsidized heavily, then you run the risk yeah, of achieving something on a temporary basis. 
yeah, and not for, for or not not on the, on the long run. There's things that are recommended to people which are simply impractical. They take multiple, multiple steps or they, they need lots of training or there's assumptions based around education that just doesn't exist. Like, oh, people will understand this. Well, yes, if they'd had an education, they would understand it. They, they're capable of understanding it, but they don't have the background. So when we are training and promoting, we talk about all the technologies giving their advantages and limitations and then it is for the household or for the user to choose the most appropriate technology. Check the concentration with the water test reagent. To do that I need a two milliliters sample of the solution. What we have learned is that we we have a role in providing a technology, but if we don't uh, bring it together with a uh, uh, whole range of other uh, things, um, this technology has limits and will not be used. Simply the fact that it is technically possible to do something doesn't mean it's affordable, accessible, in demand, would be adopted, would be effective in the real world. On the other hand, Sometimes we make our life much too complicated and we, we, we seek to map and describe every factor. Um, I think one of the things we've learned from household water treatment and safe storage is we can get on, we can try things, we can learn what works, we can build on successes and we can move on from failures. As an organisation we see um, ourselves as a model for other NGOs and how we operate and we just actually hosted a corporate breakfast on social investment at a, in our hometown in Calgary in Canada to raise awareness with um, CEOs and uh, those responsible for corporate social responsibility within their corporations. And venture capitalists that may never have gotten involved are saying, you know, I'm ready to leverage my assets and want more than just financial returns, I want to look at the social and the environmental impact as a double or triple bottom line investment. In the developer world, I think there's a number of impact investors. And again, I think that's one of the mindset shifts that needs to be taking place and that we apply our models of philanthropy or our models of investing, um, where there's different models that are applied on, in different geographical contexts. Well, social marketing means that you cannot just leave the uh, private sector alone doing it. You always need a joint intervention of a, a public sector that takes the responsibility for educating people and raising awareness. Basically, I mean, one could call it a subsidized uh, demand creation at the community level. Tiene un impacto hasta ahora porque eso viene desde atrás. Entonces, si nosotros primero tenemos que conocer la historia ¿verdad? para saber cómo poder actuar ahora. We are always emphasizing the differences in culture. But I believe as the body is always the same, it's also the mind. But there are differences. For example, in one culture, social influence, social pressure is very high, in the other it's very low. And I, it's more about frequencies and, and importance of the factors on behavior than totally different behavior. The appeal is that they should be able to very shortly see a reduction in, in the number of diarrhea cases in the family and thereby they are interested in continuing on to use the product. That's what really creates the user acceptability. Afterwards, it's a question of design that makes it easier to use in everyday life. Our job is to listen and, and one of the reasons that we believe very strongly in market-based solutions in, in treating the poor as customers um, is that that levels the playing field. You're now equals. My job is to give you what you desire, not to tell you what you ought to take. The HWTS project I'm working on right now, we're looking at creating an enabling environment for the adoption of household water treatment and safe storage in different communities. 
So what we're trying to determine is what factors need to be in place and to what extent do those factors need to be in place for the success of household water treatment and safe storage and also what factors are generally in place in some communities that limit the success of adopting HWTS projects. The revolution is not uh, taking up arms and marching in the streets. I think it's from our own mindset. We need to change the way we see things. We need to change how others see things. I think we need to completely depart from many ways we have been doing business in the past. And that's, that's why you need um, a new breed of, uh, of, of, of experts in the sector. We have a private operator and the private owner of the borehole, who we have contracted to supply water into the public line, and we deliver it using another operator to sell the water and make payments. I want to be a business woman. I want to enlarge this kiosk so that I will continue well with my life. For any company like ourselves, you're trying to smooth out your sales uh, so that you're not entirely dependent on emergency programs because you don't know what's going to happen and when it's going to happen. Uh, and of course the bigger need out there is the, for household water treatment in developing countries. It's, it's a two billion people problem and growing. I'm not talking about businesses, corporates, I'm also talking about foundations, aid agencies. So. We're like, business as usual doesn't work, right? It's what we've done now for 20 years. These successes, some of them bigger than others, but we need to rethink the way we do, we do, we do increase access to safe water. And if we don't, if you guys don't do it, nobody else will do it, so. Kim LaPaglia, and I would classify myself as a social entrepreneur, which uh, I define, yes, absolutely, social entrepreneur, uh, define as, um, not someone who gives someone a fish or teaches to fish, but changes the fishing industry. Uh, why not take on a big challenge? The, the water users association, they have to make sure that the Karagita water users get enough water and at a cheaper price and clean water. And the water is nearer to their houses. So they are, we oversee that they get water every day. But I would like to know whether you and you together are willing to put your product in the same basket to provide Tanzania ceramic filters. Mm -hmm.